Uh, this is going to be a new lecture here. Uh, this lecture will be devoted uh, to the movement of particles, uh, diffusion and osmosis. Diffusion and osmosis. Uh, let us consider the following scenario. Let's say you have a a spray can of air freshener. Let's say we spray that uh, air freshener in a room just in one location. And so we'll have all of the particles are going to be they're going to be concentrated in just one area here those particulates that come out of the spray can. And so right now, uh, if we would define this, the particles are heavily concentrated in this area. So this area here, I'm just going to, I don't know, I'm, gonna use, I'm just going to circle it here. In this area here we have a high concentration of particles. And so here we have a high concentration here. So in the rectangle there we have a high concentration of particles. Outside the rectangle we have a low concentration of particles. A very low concentration. And so uh, it would actually be better if I took this high concentration here. Okay. And we're going to put the high concentration of particles inside. So there's a high concentration of particles inside of the rectangle and there's a low concentration of particles outside the rectangle. That makes all that makes a lot of sense. However, these particles uh, this difference in concentration uh, cannot be maintained. Something is going to happen. And that something is this. This high concentration of particles is going to start to, let's put it right in the middle here, that high concentration is going to start to spread. It's going to spread from an area of high concentration out to an area of low concentration until you have these particles all over the room. Okay, Again, the particles are going to spread from a very low concentration, a very high concentration from the area where there's a high concentration, and they're going to spread to an area where there's a low concentration until they fill the entire room. And there is a name that's given to this process, the process by which particles move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Okay, And that process is called diffusion diffusion the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration diffusion let us consider the following scenario Let's say here that we have a petri dish. And on this petri dish, uh, we place a crystal of methylene blue. So we place a crystal of methylene blue on this petri dish here. There we are. Now, over time, uh, the crystal is going to start to diffuse into the the media or the the medium of the petri dish, the auger, and it's going to eventually look something like this. Okay, so it's going to spread out, okay. and so we can see we have a high concentration of the methylene blue here 
and a very high concentration, the highest concentration here, and the very lowest concentration of methylene blue on the edge of the petri dish. Now, this difference in the concentration, and so here we have a high concentration. Uh, let's see here. Let's do something. Okay. So here we have a very high concentration of methylene blue. So we have a high concentration. I'm going to put the brackets. Brackets represent concentration. So we have a high concentration of methylene blue here. And towards the edge here, we have a low concentration of methylene blue. And that's readily obvious. OK, now, the difference between that high concentration of methylene blue and the low concentration of methylene blue. That difference is called a concentration gradient. That difference is called a concentration gradient. Concentration gradient. Oops. Now particles, all things always move down the concentration gradient. So down the concentration gradient. For example, uh, I'm going to move this. I'm going to make a point here. So I need to do this to make a point. I'm going to move this over here. And... I'm going to rotate it because I need to make a point here. Okay, that's high. Okay. Now, when you move from when you move from high to low, you're moving. If I move this direction, I'm moving down the concentration gradient. So I'm moving down. down the concentration gradient because I'm moving from high to low. Now if I move here from high to low, I'm still moving down the concentration gradient because I'm moving from high to low. However, if I move from low to high this way, I'm moving up the concentration gradient. Okay, uh, and that's what we're just going to stop there. There's just some; these are just some terms you need to know uh, in reference to a concentration gradient. And particles always, uh, particles spontaneously move down the concentration gradient. For example, if you spray an aerosol can of air freshener, they're going to move. The particles going to move down the concentration gradient from a high concentration to a low concentration. However, uh, to move up the concentration gradient, you need to supply energy. You need to supply energy to move up the concentration gradient. And that's where we're going to stop here. Let us draw a solution of salt in water. Okay. Uh, we're going to have our cells. Let's draw ourselves a beaker here. And this line will represent uh, water. Very light concentration of water here. Okay, there's our water, our beaker. Now, in this water, we're going to place salt. 
so let's just put ourselves a few salt molecules when you first put the the salt in the water I'm just gonna have some crystals of salt here a few salt particles. When you first put it in the water they're going to all be concentrated in one location. Okay, so here is our salt crystal in water. Now, there's a very high concentration of salt crystals here. However, over time, over time, these salt crystals are going to start to move away from one another. Uh, let's see here. They're going to start to spread out and get as far away from one another as they can. These salt crystals are going to start to move away from one another. So they're going to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration until they fill up the container. This process by which particles even in a solution move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. This process is called diffusion. process is called diffusion. Uh, the process by which particles move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Diffusion. Let us consider the following scenario. Let's start out with a cutaway of a beaker. Okay. We're just going to have a cutaway here of a beaker. Okay, there's our cutaway of the beaker. Now, there's going to be a special situation with this beaker here. Okay, let's just put our level of, let's put our water in the beaker. Okay. Actually, let's not. Yes, let's go and put our water in the beaker. There's our water, and let's give this water kind of a, a really light color because we don't want it to be overbearing. Okay. There's our water. Now, what's going to happen here? In this water, uh, let's let's put our water molecules. Let's put our water molecules. Uh, let's make our water molecules a bluish color so we can see them. Just some of them. One, two. Oops. Well, let's put our water molecules here. Here are our water molecules. Now, there's something special about this beaker. In this beaker, there is a there is a membrane that separates the two sides of this beaker. Okay, we're gonna put that membrane here. This is called a semi-permeable membrane, and it separates the two sides of this beaker. Uh, now this membrane is just going to be completely permeable, not a semi-permeable membrane. And so we want the openings, we're going to have openings in this membrane. They're going to be large enough for water molecules to pass through. They're going to be large enough for water and see here hmm having an issue with this here 
Okay. I know we can put one here. Don't know what's going on there. Ah, uh, let's see here. Okay. So here we have our permeable membrane. And so here we have our we have our water and also we're going to add to one side of this beaker we're going to add a some particle some solvent doesn't matter what size the solvent is here Actually, let's let's do this to our particles. Let's when we first put it in, it's going to be just a crystal. So all of the particles are going to be concentrated in one location. Okay, and that's going to be the situation that we start out with. And so we have a concentrated solution on the right and a non-concentrated solution on the left. Now what's, what can happen or what will happen uh, the the water molecules because it's more concentrated on this side the water molecules of course can move to this side and some of the the solutes, the they sol the solutes rather, they'll start to spread out. Some of them will move over here, and over time, this movement is going to things are going to keep moving until there is an equal distribution of particles on both sides. And that's what we're going to end. We would end up with this. We still have diffusion. We have diffusion of water, and we have diffusion of our solvent or our solute. So both substances diffuse over time. And this membrane here, this membrane that separates the two sides of the beaker, this is a permeable membrane because both substances can pass. So this is a permeable membrane. Actually, I don't like that there. I want to put this here. We have a permeable membrane. Okay, and a permeable membrane is one in which both water and the solute can pass. That's all we have to say about this. And this is still diffusion. Let us explore another example using this uh, separated beaker, or this divided beaker. Uh, in the last example we had the blue water and a smaller solute molecule. In this example uh, we're still going to have our water, but the solute molecule is going to be larger. So let's make a crystal of this solute molecule. Okay. And there's our solute molecule. Now, just as before, we have a very high concentration of solutes on the right side. However, in this example, the solutes are too large to pass through the membrane. And so the only thing that the solutes can do in this case is to spread out as much as they can here to make a solution on the on the on the right side. However, because now 
because you have solutes, more solutes on this side, uh, this is a very subtle concept. Uh, the concentration of water on this side is not as high as it is on the left side. Left side, the water is pure, so it's very highly concentrated. And so what's going to happen in this situation is that the solute, the water molecules are going to actually move to the left, to the right side. And so you're going to get a movement of water to the left side. And you're going to have more water, end up with more water on the on the right side than you have on the left side and all of this is done in an attempt to get the concentration uh, of water the same on both sides so there are two ways to think of this water is moving the water itself is moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration that's one way to remember how the water moves or you can always remember this water always moves to where there are where there is more more solute where there are more solutes or water always moves towards salt okay uh, and let's see and so water always moves to where there is more salt this is usually students have an easier time remembering this one so we can make that blue so water is always going to move in the direction of the salt. Now this membrane before was a permeable membrane because both substances could cross this membrane. However in this case uh, only half of the substances can cross the membrane. Only the water, not the solutes. So in this case this membrane is called a semi This is a semi permeable Oops. Mm, my computer is slowing up on me. This is a semi permeable membrane. I don't know what I'm doing. A semi permeable membrane. And that's what this is here because only half of the substances can cross that membrane and now in this uh, using a semi permeable membrane only the water can move and so the movement of water from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration across a semi permeable membrane is given a special name and this is a very special name in in cell biology and a very special name in anatomy and physiology and that's called osmosis osmosis is the movement of water across a semi permeable membrane from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration osmosis what value does osmosis have to uh, to anatomy and physiology okay uh, consider this let's say we have ourselves a beaker ourselves here a beaker and in this beaker we're gonna have some water okay. uh, let's get ourselves a really want a really light color here so as not to distract Okay, there's our water. Uh, in this water, 
let's say that we have a a very high concentration of solutes in the water. So let's go here. Uh, let's give ourselves a a very uh, let's make the solutes let's make them this color. I'm going to have a very high concentration of solutes in this water. Extremely high concentration of solutes. Okay, I don't know what happened there. I want to slow down a little. Okay, we have a very high concentration of solutes in the water. Now let's say we place in this water or in this solution, we place a cell. Uh, and let's place a a red blood cell. Okay, it's not going to be drawn to scale. Wonderful. We have our red blood cell, and well, let's let's give it a color. Let's give the red blood cell a color here. Okay, excellent. And so there we have our red blood cell in our beaker. And now let's say in our red blood cell, red blood cells also have solutes in them. And so let's give our red blood cell put solutes inside of our red blood cell. Now let's do some comparisons. It should be readily obvious that the concentration of solutes in the beaker or in the solution is much higher than the concentration of solutes in the red blood cell. When this is the case, a solution that has a a solution that has a concentration greater than that of the cell, that solution is called a hypertonic solution a hypertonic solution so this solution uh, let's see here I'm going to do this this solution is a hyper this here this is going to be a hypertonic solution don't want to get the right color here hyper which means above hypertonic solution so this is a hypertonic solution here now what's going to happen to the cell okay let's just make ourselves a copy of this one here so we can examine this. So we're going to bring everything, well, we're going to bring everything over here. And so over time, what's going to happen? Okay. The solutes, or the water, Remember, water always likes to move to where there is more salt. So what's going to happen over time, the water is going to, let's actually show that using this one. The water is going to actually leave the cell and it's going to go, uh, that's not really a good color. It's going to leave the cell and go into the solution in an attempt to try to dilute the solution to make it the same as the cell. So the water is going to leave the solution, leave the cell and go into the hypertonic solution. So that over time what's going to happen is the cell, the cell here is going to start to, it's going to start to shrink because the water is going to be 
the water is going to be leaving the cell. Okay. And this process of the shrinking of the cell, of this cell here, this is called crenation. Crenation. C R E N A T I O N. Okay, and so let's just review here. If you place a cell into a solution that is more concentrated than the cell, that solution is called a hypertonic solution. And what's going to happen? Because there are more salts in the solution, the water is going to want to move where there is more salt. So the water is going to leave the cell and go into the solution and the cell will eventually shrink and shrivel up and that process is called crenation. Uh, it's also called, and so in crenation the cell shrivels. And that is it for a hypertonic solution. In this next example, we're going to start with our beaker again. However, in this example, uh, we're not going to have a very highly concentrated solution. So we're just going to have very few solutes here. It's almost pure water. Basically, we have pure water here. Uh, and let's bring in our, our cell again. Uh, let's do something here. Let's Let's make the cell a little more concentrated just so we'll know. In this example, the cell the cell is more concentrated than the solution. Okay, and that's our scenario here. Now, uh, or the solution is less concentrated than the cell. And so whenever you have a solution that has a lower concentration of solutes than the cell that's placed in it, we call that solution a hypotonic solution because in this in this uh, example, or in this case rather, hypo means below. So we have a hypotonic solution. So that means that the concentration of the solute in this solution is below that of the cell. So we have a hypotonic solution. Okay, uh, And let's make a copy of this. Let's zoom out so we can make a copy of this. Okay. And let's put our hypotonic solution over here. And let's see what's going to happen. So let's go back to our first example here and see exactly what's going to happen. Which In which direction will the water move? Okay. Because there are more salts inside the cell than there are in the solution, the water is going to move into the cells or osmosis is going to occur in, the, in a direction inside the cell. And so we have osmosis occurring the cell membrane is a semi-permeable membrane. Water can pass across the membrane, but solutes cannot. And so the cell membrane, just like the beaker example we saw, the cell membrane is a semi-permeable membrane. And that's worth mentioning here. So here we have the cell membrane. and it is semi-permeable which means that water can cross but other solutes cannot. Okay. Now when the water moves into the cell something is going to happen to this cell here and let's kind of get rid of this cell as it's drawn here because it's going to help me to just draw a whole new cell. So what's going to happen? The cell is going to actually grow because there's going to be more water in the cell. The cell is going to expand. 
it's going to swell up the cell there. And the cell is going to get larger. Uh, and there's really, really no name, no special name for the enlargement of a cell. But the cell is going to eventually going to get larger, and eventually, eventually, that cell may even get so large. I'm going to actually draw another that the cell actually ruptures. And I don't know how to draw a rupturing cell. So it's gonna just the cell is gonna rupture here. And so now the contents of the cell are going to start to they're gonna start to spill out. So the contents of the cell are going to start coming out. And so the cell will eventually burst. Okay. And that's what happens if you put a cell into a high potonic solution. A solution in which the concentration of solutes is lower than that of the cell. And so the, cell, the water is going to want to osmose into the cell. And it's going to cause the cell to swell, and eventually the cell will burst. And so this is a hypotonic solution. Uh, let's look at the last example of osmosis across the cell membrane. Uh, shown here, we have a cell, and in a solution in which the concentration of solutes is equal to that of the cell, or about equal to that of the cell such a solution in which the concentration of solutes inside the cell are the same as that of the solution such a solution is called an isotonic solution iso means the same so this is an isotonic solution and so where is going to be the net move in which direction will we have osmosis or the net movement of water in this example, uh, water will move. Water will move into the cell, and water will move out of the cell. Water will move in, and water will move out. There will be movement of water. Of water. There will be osmosis across the semipermeable membrane, but there will be no net movement of water. And so the cell size or the cell shape does not change. And so in this example there will be no osmosis. And this is, uh, this is an isotonic solution. This is the simplest of them all. Uh, how should I say this? Yes, that's all I will say about osmosis.